If you already have or you're planning to get a managed VPS from Scala Hosting, I'm going to show you the easiest way to correctly set up and configure your plan, as well as how to find, load and edit a demo website quickly, setting up a professional looking site that loads fast and lets you take advantage of every single feature that Scala Hosting is offering. And for those wondering which plans are the best, I usually recommend you either go with their WP Mini or Entry Cloud options. While the Entry Cloud is a lot better value for money, giving you around four times more resources to work with and definitely a better control panel, the WP Mini is still offering enough power for a single small to medium sized website, so there's no need to overspend, especially knowing that you can upgrade at any time. Think of it as renting out a multi-room apartment all by yourself with a private bathroom and kitchen if you go for the entry cloud option or renting out with roommates and using a communal kitchen and bathroom area if you go for the WP Mini. As for the managed servers, they're like renting out a building that you can turn into a house, a shop, a museum or whatever you want. And keep in mind that no matter which choice you make, you can actually get an exclusive 10% discount by using the link in the description. Anyways, after going through the payment process, you'll land on this screen. So let's get to work. And keep in mind that this tutorial is for Scala hosting, entry cloud or managed VPS services if you have their WP Mini, Start or Advanced plan. Watch the video right here. I'll make a separate one. As for the entry cloud and managed servers, the first thing you should do is check your email address. You'll get an email saying that your server is being configured, but more importantly, it contains a link you need to follow to create an account for your server control panel. Just type in an email and password you would like to use and create your account. Then use that account to log into your server controls. Now, if you ever want to reach this page again, you can do so from your Scala hosting dashboard. Just click on S panel and log in. Once inside for the first time, you'll be presented with a tour that gives you some info about the interface. But we're not nerds, we're not gonna read all of this. The most important step here is to allocate some space and create a partition for your website. So just click on create a new account and type in your website name. Then login information you'll use to reach the website control panel. Okay, so at this point we have three different logins for three different control panels. And if this makes you confused, let me explain why you need three different sets of login information. Well, because Scala hosting has three levels of control. The Scala hosting dashboard, here you can control your billing information, your personal information, you can renew the plans and order new ones. Basically, do everything that's related to you and the services you purchased. The S panel server controls, here you'll be able to control your server. This means you can add websites to your server, you can see how many resources you're using, you can restart your server or change the software that it's using. And then we have S panel website controls. Finally, this control panel is for individual websites that you own. Here you can create email accounts using your website name, you can manage the database or manage files, install SSL certificates or content management systems like WordPress. And there's also kinda a fourth level called the WordPress dashboard where you'll be spending like 90% of your time after the initial setup. It's where you'll work on the design, content and functionality of your website. Now with all of that out of the way, just click continue, change your PHP version to 8.2 or the newest one when you're watching this video and click on create account. Using PHP 8.2 is like having a better foundation for your website, meaning everything you do on top of it is more beneficial to your site. So let's do one more improvement to the foundation of your website. Let's go into web server management and change from Apache to Open Lightspeed, since Open Lightspeed offers up to six times better performance than the regular Apache installation. Now, in some cases, I've noticed Open Lightspeed is used by default and it's already installed, but in my case, for some reason, it defaulted to Apache. So this could happen to you as well. No big deal, one click and it's reinstalled automatically. Okay, now we're pretty much done setting up our server. So let's start working on our website. Navigate to account management and next to your website, click on manage. 
This will bring you to the third level controls, which is the website level. Let's start by scrolling all the way down and clicking on WordPress Manager. Now you'll need to create your WordPress login credentials and simply click on Install. The rest is going to be taken care of automatically. Once it's finished, you might see this error when trying to reach your website, which means that the domain name no, no, you're no, using no, no, on your no, website wait, 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 wait. isn't pointed to the Scala hosting server. Simply log into your domain name provider. If it's Scala hosting, you can find the setting right here. Choose the custom DNS option and paste in the two lines from the email you will received at the beginning. Now, keep in mind that it will take around 20 to 30 minutes or in some rare cases even longer to start working. If you bought your domain on Namecheap, Hostinger, GoDaddy or any other provider, you'll need to do the same process just within their dashboards, not the Scala hosting one. And this means you don't have to buy domains from Scala hosting. If you already have one or you can find a cheaper deal elsewhere, you can definitely use that. But what changing the DNS does is it makes sure that when people type in your website name, they're shown the correct website. After all, your website is just files on a server and you need to make sure that your website name points to the correct location for those files to be displayed. Once this process is done, again, it can take a while, be patient, your website will be reachable. Now let's start with the basics. Cleaning house. Navigate to the plugins and delete the pre-installed plugins that we won't be using. The anti-spam one is somewhat useful, but you can reinstall it later if you definitely need it. And let's add in a plugin called Lightspeed Cache, which will allow us to make the whole website faster. Once you've installed and activated, just hover over the sidebar and click on General Settings. Then request a domain key. What this does is it activates your account, opening up more features. But keep in mind that the process can take like 10 to 20 seconds. Just refresh the page until it's filled in. And once it activates, we can go ahead and tweak the settings a bit. As you can see here, currently we don't have object cache and browser cache enabled. Let's change that. Go into cache settings, then the object tab and turn it on. Make sure that the object caching method matches what you currently have enabled and then move over to the browser tab and activate that as well. Cool, now everything should be caching properly. Now I know it seems like I'm making you tweak and change all of these weird settings that you probably don't fully understand, but imagine this like the foundation of your website. We need to get this done properly and this is what separates good websites from awesome ones. We can work on the design and content at any point, but we won't have a chance to improve the foundation once we start building. But the good news is that we got most of the foundation out of the way right now. So we can actually start working on the fun part, the design and the content of your website. As you can see, my website currently has absolutely nothing going on with it. So let's change that. Go into the appearance tab and click on add new theme. Here you'll find plenty of free website designs to choose from, but I personally recommend you go with Bloxy or Astra. Since these come with great looking designs right out of the box and the themes themselves are well coded, making them fast and easy to work with. All you need to do is install and activate the theme to get it started. Then install Bloxy Companion plugin or the Astra starter themes if you went with that and you'll get a wider selection of design templates that will show up in this starter sites section. Here you can choose from any free design or buy the Bloxy theme and join the premium ones as well. For this tutorial, I'll go with a free theme that I find to look quite good, this furniture store. So just click on import and for your website builder, choose Elementor, then go through the next steps and simply install all of the demo content. Once it's done installing, your website will look exactly the same as your chosen template, which is pretty cool and definitely not something you have with absolutely every single template you install. Since now we're working with images, let's go back to our WordPress dashboard and implement a few more good practices to improve our loading speed basically. 
in Lightspeed Cache, navigate to Image Optimization. Go into Optimization Settings and turn on Auto Request Cron, as well as WebP Replacement. This way, any new images you upload to your site will automatically get optimized without you having to worry about it. To initiate this automatic process, click on Send Optimization Request and forget about it. It'll continue to optimize in the background every single time you upload new images. While that's all good, as you can see here, our website is still called Your Blog Title and the link structure isn't very pretty. Calling pages Page ID 751 or 621 isn't all that user friendly. To change this, you can navigate to the Settings tab and switch out your site title and site tagline. As for the links, you can go into the Permalinks tab and select the Post Name Structure. An unwanted side effect of this change can be a 404 error, sadly. But don't worry, we just need to add correct permissions to the HT Access file to fix this. To do this, navigate to S Panel and you'll find a button called File Manager. Then click on Public HTML, right click the HD Access file and choose Edit. I'm going to leave a piece of code in the description that you need to paste in between Rewrite Engine On and If Module Lines. Then simply click on Save. Now, if you just restart our Lightspeed web server, you can do that by navigating to the server level controls, Restart Service tab, and clicking Restart next to Lightspeed web server. And there you go, everything is working perfectly. And all of the links have regular names now with no 404 errors, with all of the optimizations still being active. Now, let's get into some specifics on how to actually build the website itself. I'll go over the most important parts like pages, menus, design and content, and of course, e-commerce. Let's start with the basics. If you have a page on your site that you know you're not going to use, you just don't need it. You can go ahead into the pages section on your WordPress dashboard and simply delete it. But if you want to create a new page, I don't recommend you do it from scratch by clicking on new page. Instead, download a plugin called Duplicate Page. Once installed and activated, this plugin will give you a new option in your Pages tab, an option to duplicate. So let's say this Services page has elements I want to use and reuse for a different page. So I'll just duplicate the Services page and I can see that the new page has this draft tag once it's created. I can then click on Quick Edit, change the name and change the slug. By the way, the slug is how the link to the page will look. Keep it all lowercase and use dashes instead of spaces. Finally, we can change the status from the draft page to published page. And if I would click on view, you can see that it's an exact copy with a different link. However, it still doesn't appear in the menu. So let's see how to add pages to the menu. To customize your menu, click on Customize tab and scroll down to the Menu section. Your customized section might look different based on your theme, but the Menu option is always there. Now click on the Main Menu option. Here you can change the names of the menu items and where they link to. As you can see, it updates real time. By dragging and dropping, you can also rearrange the order of your menu items or you can click on Add Items and add in completely new pages, like the one we've just created earlier. Once you're happy with your menu, click on the Publish button to save changes and then this little X to get back to our page. And I'll show you how to change the text and design. To edit any individual page, you'll need to click on Edit with Elementor while you're viewing that page. Now, while inside Elementor, you can click on most items and simply use the left side menu to change the text. And most elements behave in the same way. You can also grab entire sections and just drag and drop them elsewhere. You can also click on pictures and change them with the ones you upload yourself. Obviously, there's just too many variables for me to showcase the full capabilities of Elementor. But in general, Elementor works in this way. You have a section that holds columns and these columns hold elements. The sections are marked with six dots, the columns are marked with rectangles and the elements are marked by a pen icon. 
If you want to edit the element, you just click on the pen icon and this section is usually just for a drag and dropping without having to move elements outside of columns. To find all the different elements that Elementor is offering, you can click on the square right here and simply drag and drop where you want for them to appear inside your page. If it seems like it doesn't allow you to add the item you want, you can always scroll down and drag it into the empty space to create a new section that contains this element. Each design is highly customizable. If you're new to this, I recommend you use as many items from your demo content as possible and create as few new ones as you can to avoid any mobile issues. But as you understand how everything works better, you can start creating more complex designs. Finally, let's touch on how to manage the store if you're running an e-commerce side of your website as well. We have a store with all of these different items that have personalized pages as well. If you want to edit these shop items, you can do so by going into the WordPress dashboard and clicking on the products tab. Here you can see all of the different kind of demo products that have been created together with the theme when we imported our demo content. By hovering over the product and going into the edit section, you can change the product name, add a description of the product, change the display picture, category, and here on the left, you can edit the price as well as add in an additional shorter description. You can do this for every product that you have and just delete the leftover ones. And if you need more, just duplicate an existing product and change the settings that way. Again, I always recommend duplicating instead of creating new elements from scratch to avoid errors. So these are the basics of creating and editing your website in the easiest and fastest way possible. Of course, this is not a detailed guide, but if you do want a detailed guide on how to create a page with multifunctionality, uh, just let me know in the comments down below. Maybe the video is gonna be like an hour or two hours long, but I can definitely make that happen if there's enough demand for it. Anyways, good luck creating your websites, and as always, I'll see you in the next video.